Today we're going to look at an algorithm called shell sort. It's named after a very famous mathematician named Donald L. Shell. Had a lot of great contributions. I believe he passed away in about 2015 in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, so if you have time, please research him. He's a very impressive person. So shell sort is an improvement on insertion sort. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take an array that we typically would use just insertion sort on. Let's say it's got so many elements like this and shell sort is going to allow us to take sublists that are spaced by some sort of increment and we'll sort this list first and then we'll go through again in the next iteration and we'll include the next set of elements and we'll sort it. So what we do is we are progressively sorting smaller and we're progressively sorting more and more partially sorted arrays. So we're going to go through and we're going to have like a spacing of five and we're going to, we're going to sort that sublist. And then we're going to have a spacing of three. We're going to sort that sublist. Then finally spacing of one, which is just every element. And then we're going to sort that sublist. So we're going to use increment and sublist to progressively get a more sorted, a, we're going to use sublist to get a progressively better sorted list each time. Let me pause the video here. We're going to look at a quick example. Okay, here we go. So I have a rather large list here. We're going to try and go through this list and see how we can apply shell sorts. So we have 16 elements. So we're going to use what's known as an increment. So for the first pass, we're going to have an increment, let's call it k. We're going to say k equals 5. So this is our increment. And we're going to have five sublists when we do this. So we're going to have five sublists for k. So five sublists. And let's get uh, sublist number one. That's going to be a zero. And then we're going to go five elements over. We're going to get a five. And then we're going to go five elements over. We're going to get a 10. And then we're going to go five elements over, we're going to get A15. And then we're going to do sub list two. And we're going to do A1. Hopefully it's making sense. A6, we can see that it's the spacing that we're going to get, A11. And if you are starting to understand the concept here, I encourage you to grab a piece of paper. Just go ahead and do sub list uh, three, four, and five, because we're going to get five of these, right? We're going to be dividing this list by five. So sublist three, we're going to get a two, a seven, a twelve, and then sublist four, we're going to get a three, a eight, a thirteen. And then for sublist five, we're going to get a four, a nine, a fourteen. So if you could if you could follow that, basically what we're doing is we're getting these sublists put together, and we're going to go through and we're going to do insertion sort on this list, and then insertion sort on this list, insertion sort on this list, insertion sort on this list, insertion sort on this list. And we're going to get a partially sorted list in a shell. Our, our increment's five, and it's going to be like our shell for five, and then we're going to do it for three. Let's pause the video here and erase some stuff and then do it for three. All right, here we go. We're going to do it for three. So I set our increment to three here. Now we're going to have three sublists. Oops. Um, but, all right, sublists. We have three sublists and sublist one. Try and take a whack at it and see if you can just do this without even having to follow along with me. Because I promise these are going to make more sense if you do it on your own. So we're going to do a sublist and it's going to be spaced by three. So we're going to start at A0, we're going to have A3, right? And then what's going to be next? A6, then A9 and a 
12a15. And then we're going to have sublist 2. This is going to be a1, a4, a7, a10, a13, a16. Oops, forgot the one. And then sublist 3. A2, A5, A8, A11, A14. So what we're going to do is run through and do an insertion uh, sort on each one of these. And you can look at how we're, how we're putting these together. Look at this. We go right down in these vertical columns, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're just doing iterations of sorting this list. Finally, in our in our last iteration, what's going to happen? K is going to be set to 1. So each time we're subtracting 2 from our incrementer, and we're going to have just one sublist, and we do K equal to 1. Now, I don't need to do a lot of writing for this because our sublist is just going to be this. We're going to do insertion sort finally on the entire list. And it should it's a great improvement on insertion sort because we're now going to have a partially sorted list. We went through it once with five. That made our that sorted our list pretty well. And then we did it again with three. Now it's even more sorted. And then finally we do it with one, and that's the final sorting pass we have to do. Okay. So let's see how we can uh, look at this with actual numbers here. Okay, here we go. Now we finally have some real numbers that we can work with. So we're going to use the increments. Five, three, and one. So I kind of labeled this array on purpose with the indices and numbers in those indices because I really don't actually care too much about the numbers. As long as you pay attention to the indices that you're using, it's pretty easy to follow the shell sort algorithm. So let's go with increment set to five. So the increment set to five, we're gonna have our sublist one. What's that going to be? We're going to have our 0 and our 5 and our 10 and our 15. See what I mean about not paying too, not really paying too much mind to the numbers. We're going to have 21, 11, 48, and 13. And uh, we'll, we'll go through, we'll do all the sorting at the end of this. And then we're going to have our sublist 2. What is this going to contain? It's going to be 1, 6, 11, 16. And now all I have to do is put the numbers in there. So we get 60, 1, 3, and 59. And now we're going to do sublist 3. So we're going to have 2, 7, and 12, and we just need to put the numbers in there. So we should get 2, 19, and 5, and sublist 4 is going to have 3, 8, 13, and it's going to be 7, 9, 17 and then sublist 5 is going to be 4 9 14 this is a really cool algorithm because if you can just draw it out like this you can see how you're using these shells to get a progressively better sublist or a progressively more sorted list each time so if we do if we run insertion sort on this guy we're going to be left with 0 5, 10, 
15, we're going to end up with 11 at the 0th position, 13 at the 5th position, 21 at the 10th position, 48 at the 15th position. And then for this guy, we have 1, 6, 11, 16. And if we run insertions to run this, we're going to get 1 at the 1st position, 3 at the 6th, 59 at the 11th, and 60 at the 16th. And then the next one we have 2, 7, 12. All right, let's run insertion sort on this. We're going to get 2 at the second position, 5, 19. And then we're going to go through and do this one, 3, 8, 13. All right, so that's going to be 7 at the third position, 9 at the eighth position, 17 at the... 13th position. Finally, we're going to have 4, 9, 14. And if we run insertion sort, we're going to get 4 here, 8 here, and 16 here. Now, I wonder if Donald L. Shell was looking at this algorithm and he saw that you could go down a vertical line and recreate this, the sublist this way. Maybe he was thinking about matrices when he came up with this. Um, I'm not sure, or maybe just number lines in general. It's really beautiful though, how you can just look down this uh, vertical line. So if we, get, if we go down this way, we're gonna recreate our sublist. We're gonna get 11, one, two, uh, seven, four, 13, going down this one now, 13, three, five, nine, Eight, and go down this one, 21, 59, 19, 17, 16, and then 48, and 16. So I think it'd be pretty boring for me to sit here and go through and do three, then one. What I would say is, you know, challenge yourself to Go ahead and redo this same exact process for three and one, and see if you get the final sorted list. And uh, you know, the sorted list we're gonna we're gonna implement it in a program, and uh, you should be able to check your answer with that. All right, so let's see how we can go this out and see. All right, let's go ahead and make a new folder here. Call it shell sort. And new file shell.c new file shell.h and then shell.c we're gonna to want to start typing a program. Um, so maybe I'll try something a little bit different here. I think I will try to just show you what the algorithm is gonna look like in code before we actually then we'll fill in the blanks after we look at the algorithm. So Let's include our basic library. So I should include stdlib.h and then hash include stdio.h in main. So what are we gonna how how were we doing shell sort on that piece of paper? Number one, we were checking we we never, we were doing all of our sorting, well, our incrementer k was greater than or equal to 1. Because once it was 1, then that was our final pass. And we were using our incrementer to loop over and sort our list. So we're going to want an incrementer in i equal to k, we're going to use k. As long as i is less than the size of our list, n, we're going to increment i plus plus. 
and we need to take a temporary a temporary we're going to do we're just going to do an insertion sort here so how do we do insertion sort we'll take a temporary variable and assign it to the ith index the ith element and then for i e or uh, j equal to mean in in j equal to i minus k our spacing of our list as long as j is greater than or equal to zero and a j is greater than 10 we're going to increment j by j um, minus k. So this is going to allow us to go through our our sublists and if one element is larger than the other we're going to shift all of our elements and then insert it. So a j plus k equals our a j element. And then a j plus k equals 10. Okay, so we're not done yet because if we do this, it's just going to stay at the first, like for our, our example before, it's going to stay at five. So how do we how do we adjust our incrementer so it goes five, three, and then one? Well, we just have to decrement the incrementer by two. And you could, you know, use any any decrement that you, I guess, you could you could use any decrement that you want as long as you finally get to one. So for this example, if I used <clears throat> if I used three, that would give me like negative one, and I wouldn't get that final pass where I'm using a spacing of one. So whatever you choose for your decrementer, just make sure that the the final uh, the final pass is going to be one. Okay, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and put the pieces in here. We have the algorithm in, implemented, but this is going to fail miserably because we don't have um, an array. We don't have uh, a place to store temp. So we're going to need to go back through and add all of these variables to be able to test this. So why don't we do for the first thing, let's go ahead and just add <clears throat> an increment or uh, enumerated type, like always, max of 100. Why is it? Oh, stdio. Here we go. Now look at that. All the red, all the reds there. Great. So we're going to declare an array of size max, and we're going to need a temporary variable called j, temporary variable to store n, and a temporary variable to store k. So like always, we're going to just get the uh, number of elements the user wants to enter. Line break that, semicolon, and then go ahead and grab that. And remember last last time we want to use the reference to n. So we need to put the and symbol in front of the n so we're actually assigning a value to n. And then for int i equals zero i less than n, I plus plus. I'm going to go ahead and collect the input from the user. So print print f. Enter the enter the data to to be stored at percent d, and we're going to line break this. And it's a format string, so we're going to use i. 
percent D for integer formatting. So we're going to see each time that we uh, increment I, we're going to see the element that we want to insert. And then scan F. So we're going to collect some input here. Percent D, integer formatting. So if it's not an integer, if the user doesn't type in the integer section, just break the program here. And then we're going to assign um, whatever they enter to the correct element in the array. So this is, this looks like it should be taking care of most of this stuff. Why is this uh, expected a semicolon? Ah, okay, right here. So now we have everything that we really need to, to test this uh, algorithm. The last thing we want to do is be able to print out our, our list, right? So last video, we made a function to kind of go through and print out each element, but I'm not going to do this time. We're just going to loop through and print them out. So for an I, eh, let me just go ahead and copy this. So rather than getting input from the user this time, we're just going to print out the uh, elements. So percent D for integer formatting, and I'll put this little break space here. Um, and it's going to be AI. And I like to put a line break after this, printf backslash n. Oops, semicolon, not backslash B, man. <laughs> backslash N and a semicolon. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's print out the let's print out the list before before we do it too. So right after we get the input. Okay. There we go. This should be enough to test our algorithm here. So I get a CD into shell sort. And I'm run LS, so G plus plus shell.c dash output proc j uh, j was not declared in this scope uh, how to get around this because i do need that outside of the for loop how about we just go ahead and we'll make a, a J up here. So I'm adding a J up here. And now I don't need to reinitialize it right there. Let's go ahead and save that and compile it. So dot slash proc. Uh, we'll do five. Let's do 12, three, Seven, four, uh, seven, three. So on sorted list in the beginning and then sorted list in the end. Well, if you like the, you know, this video, I've got other videos on C programming and I hope you found this informative. I really think that going through uh, algorithms step by step is the way to really understand programming and data structures, and especially in a language like C where everything is strongly typed and really understandable. So again, if you like this video, get other ones, please like and subscribe and uh, you know, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching.